and needed for straight leg traction for a fractured femur. You've got your traction kit, pulled the thread through so you've just got one string to go through the pulley of the swan's neck. You've got your bandage and you've got your weights which are prescribed by the doctor usually around 10% of the patient's body weight. You've got a pillow or a small blanket or pad to support under the leg. The end of the bed, if your patient is over 40 kilos, it is important that you have one of these adult beds. This end is a lot stronger. Or you can use the bulk and bean bars. The swan's neck hooks over the edge end of the bed and sits there nicely and then the string goes through the pulley. If you're using a paediatric bed and your patient is less than 40 kilos, these are plastic ends and the swan's neck just fits over the end like so. But obviously if the child is greater than 40 kilos, this end of the bed is not strong enough to hold the weight and so we would need to get the adult bed. Applying straight leg traction for a fractured femur. For the purpose of the video, our patient is wearing her trousers, but in reality, our patient would have their trousers removed so that you can inspect the skin and make sure the traction goes directly on the skin. So once we've inspected the skin, we've looked for any cuts and abrasions, any sore areas, make sure it's clean and dry and any wounds have been dressed. Then we will need three members of the team to put on this traction. So you've got the person putting on the traction, somebody to hold and assist, and you may well have the orthopedic registrar present holding the limb and pulling, giving the child some traction while you're applying the traction, which will keep it comfortable. Okay, so we get our traction equipment. We've got our non-adhesive traction set. The double strings have been pulled through so that we've got a long string because we're only going for a single pulley. And we've tied the knots at the bottom with the clove hitch knot. So we place the traction foot end around the foot, allowing room in the gap for the child to wiggle, flex and point their toes. And then you get your colleague, you would not mind supporting the traction around the foot. And then we bring the set up, ensuring the kneecap as high as you can do on the legs. Okay, so ensuring that that's all nicely supported. We then get our bandage, which is our traction bandage. It's got a bit of elasticity in it, and it's got the yellow line that tells you the 50-50 mark so that we know a nice and easy way that we are putting on the bandage correctly. And then just at the base of the ankle, we slide the bandage holding the traction in place twice around the ankle just to support make sure it doesn't fall off and then it's a single layer from then on so we follow that yellow line making sure that we are putting on our traction on a 50 50 basis the child will have been well analgesed with paracetamol ibuprofen or a morph. You could use gas and air, um, intranasal dimorphine if required. And the use of a play specialist is really helpful to help with the distraction side of things. To ensure the child is, my knees up there, the child is comfortable and reassured. We will have given the parents explanations of what we're going to do, maybe given them a copy of the child in straight leg traction leaflet to read 
so they know what to expect before the attraction is applied. When we get to the back of the knee, we need to leave a gap so not to squash that main artery that runs up there. Okay, we don't want to cut off the circulation. So you have a little gap around the knee. And we're still supporting the leg. And we would still have the traction, the pulling being done at the ankle to ensure your patient is comfortable as possible. And you bandage as high as you can, as far as the bandage will allow. My patient's very tall. Okay, so you can trim off these end bits so they don't get in the way and tape off the bandage at the underneath where that's finished. Okay. Once the bandage is all done, we're going to attach the traction. So while my colleague is still holding the leg and putting some traction on the leg, I have got my traction cord here. I've made it shorter, so it's just one string. The other string I've tied in with the double clove hitch there. Go through the top pulley, and then we've attached again with a double clove hitch, clove hitch knot on the end here, the weight which has been prescribed by the doctor, usually around 10% of the child's body weight. So you put your thread through the pulley and then you very carefully lower the weight so the weight must not be touching the edge of the bed and must not be on the floor. So you want your weight free from the floor and you very carefully let the weight go and then the person holding onto the leg can gently carefully remove and that should be nice and comfortable for our patient. So now we're in traction. The danger would be if we left her just like this, she would slide down the edge of the bed and the weight would go onto the floor and then she'd be in lots of pain because her leg would not be in traction. So we, we counterbalance that by putting the leg in counter traction. So if we have a funky bed like this, we can tip the end of the bed up. We can tilt, tip the end of the bed up, which provides the counter traction and if we don't have that we can just stick a pillow underneath the bottom of the mattress which would lift up the end of the bed and then we want to keep that heel off the edge of the bed so we would place a, a thinner pad or a blanket or a pillow underneath the leg and that allows her heel to be free from the end of the bed she's much more comfortable she's leg supported she's not going to get pressure sores on her heel. Ideally, we would have a bare foot here, we wouldn't have a sock, so that we can inspect the circulation. Then if you want to tilt up the head end of the bed, you can, and the child can sit up. Oh. And eat their dinner and play as they wish. Ongoing cares of a child in traction. Neurovascular OBS need to be done initially for the first five minutes post application and then half an hour afterwards and then hourly after that. We need to feel for the pedal pulse, which is found in the foot, and then we need to check the colour warmth and the circulation. So we need to check that she's got full feeling in all of her toes and from her heel up. Do you feel that? Lovely, and across the top of her foot as well. And then we also want her to wiggle her toes, and make sure that they're all moving beautifully. And then we want you to point your toes and bring your ankle up towards your nose to your toes to your knees. Lovely, thank you very much. So those are being done every hour. And then we need to check underneath the skin. So we need to check the, um, remove the bandages daily to do the skin checks. So I would need a couple of friends again, one to support the leg, who would like to hold at the ankle for me. At this point we can keep the weight attached and we just unwrap the bandage all the way off 
I won't do the whole thing today. We would remove the whole bandage. And once the bandage is removed, you can inspect the skin. Remember, this is not adhesive, so this will all fall off if you let go. So it's really important that your person who's holding on is has hold, making sure the traction is still in place. While the bandage is off, the child's still being pulled, the weight's still there, they've still got traction held. We can do some skincare, we can wash the leg, we can moisturise the leg. Okay, and we can check the skin integrity, make sure nothing's rubbing, there's no red marks, um, and no pressure areas. If we were to remove the lift the weights off, we would need to maintain traction at all times. So we have somebody actually pulling and remain maintaining that traction, otherwise she's going to be in lots of pain. But you can do this with the traction still present if you've got enough people to hold. Otherwise, you need to maintain the traction so you need another person here. Once you've done the dressing, checked all the wounds, checked everything that's underneath, you would get a new bandage and reapply that the same as we did at the beginning. So just a little cheat because we haven't actually taken it off. And while that's all happening, you've got people holding the leg, talking to the child, keeping her distracted, obviously ensuring that before you even start this procedure, the patient's been given adequate analgesia to ensure that they're comfortable through the process. Once we're all neat and done, we would release the weight back down and as the weights go, Lisa can let go and she's comfy. With regards to toileting, your patient is going to need to use a bedpan um, or bottles if they're a boy and this is tricky um, but we can help support and encourage the child while they do that. Always good to have someone supporting the leg while you slide under the bedpan and um, encourage, you know, reassure the child that we do this all the time and we don't mind. Often it results in wet beds and sometimes wet bandages, in which case we'd need to change the bandage and the bed and all, all of those things again to make sure we've not got any wet bandages on the skin to make it sore. It's always good to encourage the parents to keep close eye on the traction and if it's coming loose or the toes are cool and not wiggling or the weight's touching the floor or any of those problems they know to call the nurse to come and redo the traction to make sure it's all in its best working order to maintain pain relief for your patient with traction. To change the sheets for a patient in traction, which you may need to do particularly after toileting, you remove the current sheet that they're laying on. You would get the corner and the far corner of the um, sheet and pass it underneath itself, and the opposite person can pass it to you. Using the underneath corner, you would just start to pull the sheet from underneath itself. If the patient can, they can lift their bottom up. As you pull the sheet out, and remove your dirty sheet. You can clean, do cares on the patient if you haven't already at this point. Clean the bed underneath the patient. They can lift their bottom up if they can. Do your cares on top. Get a towel. Dry the patient underneath on both sides and on top if you need to. Obviously, maintain their dignity at all times. Give them around 30 seconds to dry as best as you can because they're in traction. And then we can put in the new sheet. You would concertina or roll the sheet. Um, I don't know if you can see that in the video. So we've just rolled the sheet up lengthways. Um, and then we leave enough space at the bottom that the sheet can be tucked in underneath the patient. Very carefully put the first roll underneath the patient and then you can begin to roll the sheet up at the same time underneath the patient. Now if the patient is particularly heavy, you may find it more beneficial to use a sliding sheet to help you and that will make the sheets more slippery. 
and you would just apply the sheet to the sliding sheet and do it at the same time. The patient should be able to lift up their head. Um, don't go too hard. And you'll pull it up underneath the patient. Just lift up your head there. We'll pop it under your pillow. Tuck in the sheet and make sure your patient is comfortable. Hopefully because you've gone upwards um, they won't have slipped down the bed and we will have maintained traction throughout. Now that we've finished we can replace our pillow underneath the leg, lifting gently the fractured leg, keeping the heel free and the knee free and ensuring the patient's comfortable.